All right, now let's take a look and find the area between two curves with respect to y. We just looked at it in terms of x. This one's going to be a little bit more advanced. Let's take a look, see how we can solve this problem. For example one, we have find the area between the two curves of x equals sine of y and x equals cosine of y from y equals 0 to y equals pi. Again, I want to show you the graph before we get started because this is, these equations or relations are in terms of y. And I want to you to see that the interval at this time is vertical and not horizontal, goes from 0 to pi. So here is our graph actually. Uh, this curve right here is so a little bit. Uh, this first curve is sine of y, so the blue curve. Uh, the next one is x equals cosine of y, the orange curve. We want to find the area between the two. Now notice there and we want to go from 0 to pi. So notice that there's going to be two separate pieces that take place. This piece is going to be this one right here. And the second piece is going to pop up here. So that's the reason for this is because they intersect at this y value of pi over 4. So as I said in the last lesson, anytime you're finding the area between two curves, you want to figure out where they intersect so you can set up separate intervals for each. All right. So from 0 to pi, there is an area. We just have to figure out where they intersect and find these two different areas, sub-areas, you could say. So again, you don't actually have to graph this to solve it. I'm just showing you the graph of these two so that um, you have a conceptual, uh, visual con concept of what's going on here. OK, so anyway, that does lead us to the first step, which is to set these relations equal to each other. We want to figure out. Um, that point where they're crossing the y value, which again, you can see is pi over 4, but let's prove that. So for step 1, you're going to set them equal to each other. So you're going to have sine of y equals cosine of y. Step 2, you're going to find the y values of intersection. So the real question is, where does sine equal cosine on the unit circle? And that is at pi over 4. All right, at pi over 4, you have this uh, point right here square root of 2 over 2, common square root of 2 over 2. And remember, sine and cosine are based on x and y of this point, and this is where they are equal to each other at pi over 4. So don't, don't let the y confuse you. It's just a variable. This is just saying where does sine equal cosine. The answer is that y equals pi over 4. And we're only worried about from 0 to pi, since this is the only place where we're, can, we're trying to find the area between these two curves. So over four, they intersect. All right, so that leads us to step three, which is to set up our absolute value intervals. Going back to when we found the area between two curves, um, just in terms of x, um, remember that um, it doesn't actually matter which which curve is above and below. Now, now when we're talking about with, in terms of x and y, you're going to have one curve that's to the right and one curve that's to the left. So if you, for example, um, if you, for example, took uh, this orange curve and subtracted the blue curve, you get a positive number back, the areas, I mean. Uh, you get this positive area back that's shaded right here. Now, if you did the reverse, if you did the left curve sine and subtracted cosine, you get a negative area back, okay, because these values over here, these x values, are less than these x values. Same concept, though. If you just do 1 minus the other uh, from 0 to pi over 4, you're going to get the area as long as you take the absolute value. So when we set up our integrals, we're going to put absolute value bars around them to ensure that we get the right answer. Now, since you can see the graph, you could just do cosine minus sine for this interval and then sine minus cosine for the next, and that would take care of it. They would both be positive. Okay, so... But again, you don't have to do right minus left. Left minus right will work as long as you put absolute value bars around them. So let's set up our intervals for step three. All right, so for the first one, I'm just going to do the integral from 0 to pi over 4, which is where they cross. Now, again, you know, I can see that cosine is bigger than sine for that one. And you could test to see which one's bigger uh, just by... Uh, plugging in values to see which one's bigger. Or, like I said, you can just put absolute value bars around the integral. So I'm just going to do it the easy way without having to graph. I'll just do sine minus cosine. 
and this is dy, by the way. Not that it really matters. Um, anyway, because I really, because I'm assuming that I can't see the graph, then I, I really don't know if this is going to be a negative or positive answer. So I'm just going to put absolute value bars around it. My other integral is set up almost exactly the same way, except it goes from pi over 4 to pi. And I'm just going to set it up exactly the same way. Because again, I'm assuming I don't know which one's bigger. It's quicker this way, by the way. You can do test values. Again, what you could do is uh, you can just plug in a y value between 0 and pi over 4 and see which gives you the bigger x value back. And you're going to be able to see, for example, like if you plug in uh, pi over 6 for cosine, it's going to be bigger than sine. So you would put cosine first if you want to do it that way. But again, this is the quicker way. You don't have to do a test value. Just take the absolute value of your definite integrals. All right, so there's our setup. We have two separate definite integrals that are absolute valued. We're going to add them up to get this total area that we were looking at um, between the curves. Okay, so it's going to be this area from 0 to pi over 4 plus this area. And again, we're just going to take the absolute value so we know that both of them are positive. All right, so let's do that. So let's talk about the first integral. Uh, antiderivative of sine of y is negative cosine, and antiderivative of negative cosine is negative sine. So it'll be negative cosine minus sine. This is in terms of y. Won't really matter, it's the same as for x, and we're going for the first one from zero. Pi over 4. Of course, the definite integral for the second one is going to be exactly the same. It's going to be negative cosine of y uh, minus sine of y. And that's going to be from pi over 4 to pi. Okay, so basically at this point, we can just plug in and evaluate. I'm going to try to do that. Um, on another sheet so we don't get confused here. So first it's going to be negative cosine of pi over 4. Okay, so here's our first little chunk right here. We're going to have negative cosine of pi over 4 minus sine of pi over 4 for our upper limit as shown here. Then we're going to plug in 0 for our lower limit making sure to put brackets around for minus brackets negative cosine of 0 minus sine of 0. Put absolute value bars around that since we like we just discussed. Uh, we really don't want we really don't know whether it's positive or negative um, if we're not given the graph so we're going to take the absolute value of whatever we get and will give us the area of this little uh, pizza right here as we said. So cosine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. Put my negative in front of it. Okay, and sine of pi over 4 is the same, so I'm going to put it in front of that. It's going to be minus brackets. Negative cosine of 0 is actually going to be negative 1, and then sine of 0 is 0. Okay, so what will this give us? Well, again, don't forget your absolute value bars. Negative square root of 2 minus... Negative square root of 2 over 2 minus square root of 2 over 2. So this is actually, how can you say this? This is going to be negative square root of 2 because it's negative square root of 2 over 2 basically times 2. Which is negative square root of 2 here. Now this minus minus right here is going to become plus 1. So we have our absolute value bars in it about around negative square root of to plus 1. Now how can we write that as a radical um, without having to write it as a decimal? Because again, we want to be as accurate as possible. Well, note that square root of 2 minus 1 would just be the reverse of negative square root of 2 plus 1. And in that case, it would just be positive instead of negative. So uh, all that to say that this is going to just be equal to Square root of 2 minus 1. Okay, you might be confused by that. Let, let me kind of break it down what I was saying. 
let's just say this was uh, negative, uh, negative 2 plus 1. Okay. We know that's equal to negative 1. We know if we take the absolute value of that, it's just going to be positive. So why not just rewrite it as 2 minus 1, basically? So doing the same thing, but with square, uh, square root of 2 minus 1. So that, this answer right here is going to give us the area of this little shaded region right here. Okay, we're then going to have to add that to this bigger shaded region to get our total area from 0 to pi between the curves of sine and cosine. All right, so let's go ahead and set up our next integral. And if, well, we've already set it up. Let's go ahead and evaluate it. So we're going to be evaluating that second piece from pi over 4 to pi of the same exact setup. So we're going to do that. Okay, so first of all, we're going to plug in our upper limit pi, and then we're going to plug in our lower limit for the second integral, which was uh, pi over 4, and then evaluate that. Um, cosine of pi is negative 1, but if we have a negative in front of there, it's going to make it positive 1. Minus sine of pi to 0. Now, these brackets are very important. We get our signs right and everything. It's going to be minus, minus, so it's going to become plus square root of 2 over 2 for cosine. And then it's going to be, and I already noticed my mistake here, it's going to be plus square root of 2 over 2 again. So let's adjust this. Okay, so we basically have 1 plus square root of 2 over 2 plus square root of 2 over 2. Well, 1, that's going to end up just being two of these, the two is going to cancel, so it's going to be, end up being one plus square root of two. Or you can rewrite that as a square root of two plus one. Okay, so it's almost like our last area, except it's the last area with square root of two minus one. This one is the square root of two plus one. Again, that's going to give us this area right here. So the square root of 2 plus 1 is going to give us this big area right here. This area right here, again, we said was square root of 2 minus 1. So we have to add these two to get a total area between the curve from 0 to pi, which is exactly what we're going to do. So let's just add these two areas up, square root of 2 minus 1, and then square root of 2 plus 1, and that will be our answer. All right, so final answer is going to be square root of 2 minus 1, that first little area, plus square root of 2 plus 1. Now notice the minus 1 and the plus 1 are going to cancel. The only really thing you're adding are these two square root of 2s, so your final answer. I'm going to put it in green since our shaded region is in green, is 2 square root of 2 which, um, again, the square root of 2 is around 1.4, so we're talking about something around 1.8. We take a look at the graph. Uh, let's see if this makes sense. It's a little bit, we want to ask ourselves, does it look like it's a little bit less than 3? Well, it's certainly between negative 1 and 1. This, so this would actually have a width of 2, right? Um, and... If we went all the way up to pi, that's more than 3. So this total area is 6, if we look at it as a rectangle around 6. 2.8 seems plausible. seems like it's about half of that, a little bit less than half of that total shaded region, if we were to include the rectangle. That's it for your area between two curves with respect to y. If you have any other questions about this example, let me know.